the EW100 DSP. Overall build quality, the shell is, it's fine for the price. Looks kind of nice. I like that you can see inside there. Yeah, no ear hooks, which is surprisingly comfortable. I kind of dig it, to be honest. Does have a microphone. We are currently listening to the SimGot EW100 microphone. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And then just terminates into a USB-C. So yeah, overall, it's not bad for the price. Not bad at all. How do these things sound? So, SimGot has done it, in my opinion. This is the best DSP that I have currently tried. Um, I didn't like the Moondrop Quarks because of its noise floor and its weird fade-in, fade-out issue. Uh, I didn't like the Droplet, same reason. I, I did like the Tanya DSP, that was a good one, but I think this is better. Uh, I didn't love the Zero DSP. This one is currently my favorite. This is my favorite DSP IEM right now that I have currently tried. Um, why is it my favorite? So versus the Tanya, this I think is just a little bit smoother. Um, yeah, it's just, it's a little bit easier to listen to. Very enjoyable still. Very similar vibe. Very similar vibe, but I find this more enjoyable. Um, yeah, this is just more my thing overall. And I think it's something to do with the mid treble. It's just a little bit less, a little less of that, you know, harshness there. Uh, yeah, it's pretty dang good. I didn't have any noise floor issues. I didn't have any weird fade in, fade out issues. I just kind of threw them in and enjoyed my music. Now, the only thing sound wise I can complain about is it does have a Harmon level upper mids. I personally prefer a little bit less than Harmon, uh, quite a bit less than Harmon, but I still think this is good. I still think this is quite good, and I think every other DSP I am that I've tried has Harmon level upper mids, so whatever. Um, yeah, uh, the build is kind of whatever. It's not like the most fantastic thing. It didn't come with a pouch or nothing, only the one set of tips, but the sound is there. The sound is quite good for the price and I think it's the cleanest sounding best sounding DSP that I've currently tried I, I I don't know what else to tell you um overall kind of plays my library okay it is what it is it, it has a th it has a bit of warmth in the in the base there but it does have it does have a slight but base tuck but all these DSP IMs do it's just fine. It, it's it's a totally fine listen, and I, I can absolutely recommend this given its price. Um, it's, a, it's relatively similar to the non-DSP version uh, with some minor tweaks to the tuning there. Overall, it's a good, it's a good little IEM. It's totally fine. And I would recommend it. If you don't have a DSP IM currently, if you like if you don't have one at all, yeah, this is the one to get, in my opinion. Um, if you do already have one, even especially if you have the Tanya DSP, it's incremental, you know, like it might not be worth getting both the Tanya DSP and this. All the Tanya DSP did come with some spare Tanya filters. Those things are baller. They're great. Great to have around. Slap that on an IEM. It just lowers the upper mids. It just, it's, it's awesome to have around. This didn't come with spare filters, didn't come with anything like that. But, you know, uh, it's a bit of a toss up there. If you already have the Tanya, maybe not worth it. But if you don't have a DSP IEM, I think this is the one to get personally, at least out of the ones that I've tried. So, if you have any questions for me, leave them in the comments down below. Like, comment, subscribe, and until next time.